Yeah, when I want to think. See, yeah. And then throw it over my shoulder. <laughs> it is weird when the wind blows. And right? You feel it. It's kind of... It tickles your ear, yeah. A little bit, yeah, yeah. So is this your first Comic-Con? It is. It's my first San Diego Comic-Con. I've done a couple of comic conventions in Canada, but this is my first... Uh, this is the big show. This is the one that... Uh, this is the, the big leagues where everybody comes to play, and I'm excited to be here. What do you think so far? It's crazy. <laughs> It's so cool. It's honestly, we're, we're, we're fortunate to be in this, in this genre, sci-fi, and have these fans. And I mean, just out there waiting to come in, and the guy's like, can I have a picture with you, Mark? I love your show. And I'm like, I'm going to ask for one of those. This is cool. Soon. Okay, sure. <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. But it, it's just, it's, it's, um, it's something you dream of as an actor. You know, like, everyone likes to say that they just want to do it for the craft and for the love of the work and, that, and, 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 and playing a character in a story, which is all true. But everyone has that that deep down desire to 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 grow in the career and, and, and put out product that people love and and, and want to uh, want to appreciate. And I and I'm just I'm fortunate and I feel really lucky to be here and see all these crazy dressed up fans and I love it because I'm a closet nerd, you know myself and I love the superhero genre and and, and it, to me it's just exciting. I mean, you open up the door. What what are you what are you a closet nerd about? Yeah. What what are the key key things that you love? Superman, yeah. Star Wars. I mean, I had a, I had an operation when I was a kid on my leg, and I remember I had like a wheelchair thing, and I had all my and I still have these pictures, and I have all the Star Wars toys. I have Luke and Leia, and and like and like the Jabba the Hutt, and like it was just, and I had the ATAT, the Land Walker, the Snow One, and Millennium Falcon. It was just like those were those were epic, epic toys, you know. And Star Wars classic or Star Star Wars, Star Wars classic, the yes, the, uh, four, five, six, and uh, it was just that stuff. And I mean, Star, even Star Trek, you know, I got into that in later years. Um, I loved Voyager, so working with Jerry Ryan was really cool and really exciting for me. Um, you know, the Hulk and like, and even like I, I didn't get it. I was never really into comics, but like Iron Man when they did the, when they did the new movies, I'll get it. It's probably my my, my mom. <laughs> um, when when that kind of when that kind of stuff came out when those movies came out I mean Iron Man was just that was so cool I mean I'm a gadget freak like I, I'm, a, I'm a nerd I'm an Apple nerd and I just I love that sort of stuff and so anything that has to do with like LED lights it's cool with me you know are you going to try to walk around and get some stuff definitely I'm definitely going to go and explore <laughs> like after the panel I'm going to go and explore I mean we have some stuff to do today I got a lot of press to do today but when I can I will definitely you totally should oh it's incredible and I just want to—I just want to take in because honestly, this is all about the fans. This is all about the people that are coming here to enjoy life. And I mean, people that spend what a year building a costume out of U, a UVA foam and like and like pl- and, and fiberglass, and like to do their their what is it the the, the Master Chief costumes oh, yeah. and the Iron Man costumes. You gotta you gotta respect those people that are doing all this work, putting these costumes together to come and dress up and, and walk around and meet some people that they that they admire. And I think it's cool. So if you have, oh, sorry. So if you, no, I was just gonna say if you had your pick, you have superhero movies that you would want to be in, whether it's been made yet or not. God, I, I I really love the Iron Man series. Not. Uh, I love the Avengers and the Iron Man. Uh, Captain America, I, because I'm not a huge comic book guy, like I didn't really enjoy Winter Soldier as much as the first one. But like that's just personal taste. But like the Iron Man series and being maybe part of the Avengers would be fantastic. Superman, I mean, like Man of Steel was a great movie. I saw it twice in the theaters. Like I'm a I'm a Superman. That's like my first and foremost. That's my that's my superhero. That's my that's my dude. But um, that would be fun to be a part of. So, uh, by Saros, I think that his arc in the first season was one of the most interesting of all the characters. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, did you see that coming? I mean, when you first um, got read the script, did you know where this character was going? No. We were given a backstory. We were given uh, enough information to do the auditions from, and then, uh, like, what we could do to build, start building a character. Um, and then it all changed when I did the second audition. Like they gave me a different, the backstory was a bit changed, like the, the script was different. And so it was like a process of, of learning and, 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 and just pulling in all the information you could. Um, I did not see his, his arc coming at all, like as far as where it would go. I was hopeful because I know, I'm no dummy, I know in sci-fi when you start killing a lot of people, if you don't do something good soon, you are not on the show anymore. People like to kill off the bad guys. 
I the, know it's telling when at the beginning of the series I really hate this character. I want him to go away and die. I really and by the end of the season it was like don't kill him. He's a really good character. Well, you know, I, I, I thank you for that. I, I that something I that I wanted to do, I want I worked hard at doing was was trying to bring some humility and some and some humanity to Tobias Harris, not just make him a jerk. Not just make him the guy that killed people and, and you know, I had to kill Doreen. Yeah. Who, who go, is one of the, the one of the one of the most she was one of the most hated and most loved characters at the same time on the show up until like season four or whatever when she died like there were fans either people loved her character they're like oh she's a hick we hate her or they loved her because she was so charming and funny so they didn't there was no middle ground there was no like I don't mind Doreen it was like love or hate and so I took like a really strong uh, character from people's audiences opinions and I put a an air bubble in her brain. <laughs> and that's not cool in the Twitterverse, you man. You with a smile, though. Because she's lovely, and we had a lot of fun. And, we, and there was jokes about it afterwards. She was pretending to be so mad at me, and I had to take her out for dinner and, and say, I'm sorry. You know? But, um, you know, and there was the backlash on Twitter. <laughs> hey, guys, I didn't... Me, Mark, and Ema didn't actually kill her. She's still here. Look, she's tweeting right now. She just retweeted it. She's fine. There was a great relationship between Viceros, Viceros and Maureen. It was like... I know, I know, and I wanted to play a little bit more like with his deviousness, and I wanted him to try and win her over a little bit more, and I wanted him to maybe play around like flirting with her a little bit, and like and building that kind of thing. But and then kill. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what happened. Naturally. That's how it came across. Um, you know, and it was it was fun to just explore. And I mean, she's a she's a she's a talented theater actress who is who is. Um, just stepping into her careers in, in film and television and um, we learned a lot from each other and so we helped, I had some firsts on this show as well and she did as well and we, we got to like kind of guide each other through some of the scenes at the beginning because we spent a lot of time together so there's a really stark contrast between your personality and your character's personality how was that for you being able to play somebody that's so different from you um a lot of the times when like when Biaseros was being like playful and cocky and, and funny and when he was like dealing with Doreen a lot of that was me um obviously I don't murder people I don't kill monkeys <laughs> that we know of <laughs> I do not kill monkeys I love monkeys monkeys are awesome um so there's there's that I mean there's that aspect and, and the murderous tendencies and the psychopath and the, and the survivalist I mean everyone's got a bit of like self-preservation in them um, but to that extreme where he would do anything and, and, and screw everybody over, I don't think is, is me. At least I don't want it to be me. Um, that kind of stuff was, was definitely, you know, you had to play outside of your, outside of your comfort zone and become that guy. Um, so where do you see your character going next this coming season? Um, I can't talk too much about that, obviously. A, because I don't know, because only, I've only seen episode one. Um, but I want to see him get more involved in, 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 in his backstory and figure out where this guy's motivation came from, why he is what he, why he is, why he is, like where he came from and, and what put him in such a situation where he's going to be working for Alaria and, and, and create, helping create a virus that's going to destroy half the population. So I think that's where it, that's where I want I see him. I want to see him, his backstory developed. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.